the next demonstrations for a different type of memory leak, and more specifically the leaks that uh, can typically exhaust uh, the memory of the code. So same approach, I'm going to compile my code in no zero with dash g. Just to make sure this is correct. I'm going to submit this code to the queue. Right, so I'm going to do console.exe. Do I have a mantle.xa? Just to check. Yeah. This path jumps up. And we're going to go through the example. Any question on your side? No question? Okay, sounds good. All right, so this example. Is loading. So typically in this example, uh, the features I would like to show you is a bit different, is what we call the memory usage and the memory statistics. So typically in an application that is well written, you would have uh, the same amount of allocations uh, and deallocations. So you want as many th uh, frees as you have of malloc's. Now, sometimes uh, it's more easily said than done, uh, and applications are not developed properly, and uh, especially um, in, in Fortran applications, it is quite frequent that you end up with a lot of allocations and you do not have all the frees uh, for, for, for these. So this is sometimes harmless, but if you create a lot of allocations inside a loop and you do not free them, this is typically how you would end up with a growing memory usage of your code over time. And if your code is too big, it may lead to a crash because of an out of memory error. In the linear DDT, we have tools uh, to detect this kind of things. And I'm going to show you right now. So for instance, I'm going to put a breakpoint on my line 100 here. So memory debugging is activated. I have a light memory debugging, uh, so fast. I'm going to play my code. And I've missed my breakpoint because I didn't put it in the right location, did I? All right, so I've been on the wrong line. Sorry about that. Yeah, that was line 61 I wanted, not that one. All right, so the code is finished. I'm going to restart it. Try again. Um, yes, so I was saying that um, when you're not uh, deallocating the memory, um, all the time, and if there is a memory allocation in the loop, your program can uh, keep growing in terms of memory usage until there is no memory uh, available, in which case it would crash. So with the memory usage feature, you can monitor and export uh, this data into Excel file or CSV files in order to see the list of the allocations and the, the amount of memory that you're using. Okay. So my code is coming back up. All right, so hopefully the breakpoint is in the right place this time. Okay, line 61. Let me click on play. Got it, and that's what I wanted. So my code is stopped at a breakpoint. If I want to look at the memory usage, you can go to the tools menu, so on top, and you have two different things that are available when memory debugging is activated, is the current memory usage and overall memory stats statistics. So if I click on the memory usage, this is typically what it would look like. So you have, for all the processes that you're monitoring, you can retrieve data about the, the, the usage of the memory uh, that you have. So if I close this and make a couple of iterations, oh, come on. Right, so my breakpoint was still not on the right line of code, so I have to do it again. Sorry about that. Uh, I think it's because I put the breakpoint on the while loop and not inside the while loop, so it stopped once when I entered this loop and then it didn't hit the breakpoint again. 
these are the adventures you have when you're doing live demonstrations. Right. So actually, there is a question in the chat, which is, um, what memory option is necessary to get the memory usage? Um, this is enabled when you have a, a, a fast memory usage. So there's no keyword associated to the debugging options to get these two um, to get these these two entries uh, in the code. So let me jump to this particular line. Yeah, that was it. So I want to add a breakpoint here. Okay, let's do it again. Right. So we hit the breakpoint once. I'm still in the loop. Okay, so you see here I'm doing a couple of iterations in my code. I'm going to pause the code now, have a look at the memory usage again. And now you can see very clearly that one process, and especially the process zero, is using much, much more memory than all the others. So to determine whether the developer is responsible for this leak or um, it's a third party library or that is responsible, you can look at the colors in the legend. So typically this is red. And on the side, you can see that the red color is associated with keyword packet uh, double point double point allocate in packet.cpp. And this is typically um, this is typically user defined. This is part of my application. So if you click on this menu here, you can see the list of the pointers and the associated memory that contributes to this uh, amount here. And as we have seen, if I close this, for instance, I go through one or two more iteration, this amount of memory is growing. So this is more memory than we had because we have created additional memory. So if I keep this application running, like let it run, uh, if this amount of memory reaches the total amount of memory available on my machine, it would crash. We need to investigate where these are coming from. So by looking, clicking on this uh, picture, clicking on the pointers in this data, for instance, you can retrieve the backtrace. So you can see exactly where these pointers are created. And for instance, here, they've been created on line 86. Close, close. So here in the allocation. So typically, this is a C++ code. We want to see where the destructor is. I think it's somewhere up there. And what we see here is that this destructor is empty, which means that we are never going to deallocate and to release the memory that we're using. So what we want to do here is free of something. I forget what something is, but um, I think it's free packet. Uh, but anyway, if you add the free here, you would ensure that your application is safe and can run um, to the end without exhausting the memory available on your machine. You can also get similar data if you look at the overall memory statistics, because this is where you see how much memory has been allocated and freed. You can count the number of calls for allocations and deallocations. And once again, you would want these calls to be as even as possible. Uh, and you can see also how much memory has been allocated by your program uh, at one given moment. So all of these data can be exported. Uh, you can export this, so for instance, table view, you can export this to a spreadsheet uh, to keep a record, and you can compare this at two different breakpoints uh, on, you know, um, during the time in order to see the differences uh, of your application as it runs. Any question about this particular example? Question? 